Hello everyone and welcome to the 28th Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to all Source Engine games, but today we're working in Counter-Strike GO. Today's topic is an introduction to material proxies. If you've used material proxies before, it's most likely to do an animated texture, and you've probably just copy and pasted the proxy code from one VMT into another. Material proxies are very powerful, and they allow us to manipulate just more than a VTF's frame index, or its alignment to make it scroll. We're going to create this sign flickering effect purely using material proxies and no map logic. To really understand what we're doing, we're gonna add each effect one by one. If we take a look at the map file that we're working with, we have a prop static, which just says source engine discord. This prop has two textures applied to it, lightbroken one and lightbroken two. Lightbroken one controls the word discord and lightbroken two controls the word source engine. Let's open this up in VMT editor. If you don't have VMT editor, there's a link in the description. However, you can just type all this in notepad if you'd like. With this open, let's just take a look at the VMT really quick. It's unlit generic using color two because it's a model, you're supposed to use color two. And then my color value is just typed right here. Let's go to the proxies tab and there's nothing here. To create a proxy, we first just type proxies and then it will give us our open and close curly brackets. And then inside of this, we type the specific proxy name that we want and we're going to start with a sine wave, which is just the sine material proxy. If you're wondering what material proxies are available, let's open up the VDC. And in the search, we can just type list of material proxies. And then in here, we have all of the proxies that are documented. They're all categorized out. We're gonna be doing stuff in number generation and calculation. There are some game specific things down here at the bottom, meaning that you know the Counter-Strike Global Offensive one probably won't work in Portal 2. And and vice versa. Let's scroll up to number generation and we want sine wave. So a sine wave gives us this shape here. So the numbers are just going to oscillate between a min and a max and we can determine how often it does that or the phase length. We have these variables to play with, sine min, max, sine period, result var, and the time offset. We're going to really just play with period, min, max, and result var. Let's go back to our VMT and we can add all of these. So we'll do sine min, sine max, sine period, and then result var. So sine min is going to be zero. We don't want to go below zero because zero is already going to be the color black. We'll do sine max, which this is going to be the full color of our object, which will be represented by color two. The sine period. So the phase length will be three seconds and the result var. The result var is going to be just dollar sign color. Dollar sign color is the overall color of the object. So for instance, if we were to go into hammer and this is somewhat the same thing. If we were to type just all 127s or 128s in here and then hit apply, we can see that that got darker. This is essentially what we're going to do with color, um, it's going to change the overall brightness of our total material. So let's change that back to full. And inside of VMT editor, let's just hit save. And inside of game, we can type mat, reload all materials, and that proxy should start to work. So we can see that every three seconds, we are going from black back to our full color, and it just keeps going forever and ever. We can do a lot of cool things with this. We can make the fade only go to maybe say half dark. And if we reload materials again, we can see that we don't go to full black now. We can change the sign period to decimal values. So let's say 0.2. This is going to make that, that fade really quick. So maybe if you wanted a blinking light, you could do something like that. And before when I said max of one is the full color of our material, we can actually kind of go above that using sign max. So let's set the max value to five and let's set the sign period to five as well. So every five seconds, we're gonna go from half brightness all the way up to five, which is above one. So our material will end up turning white. If we reload all materials now, we can see the material's white and it's white for a while. Then it goes down to half brightness and right back up to white. What's happening is since the total value of the sine wave is a 
above what would be white for so long, the material will only ever render white. And we can do some really cool things with this number generation now. If we say we wanted to just invert this logic, we could do sine min of negative five and a max of one. This will allow the material to only be at the full color value for a fraction of the time and then black for the rest. Let's swap this back so our min is zero and our max is five. But how would we get this so it doesn't ever go white, but we still want it to be at max brightness for longer than it's at dark? We can use a clamp proxy. So the clamp proxy is going to allow us, if we scroll up under, let's type clamp, keeps values within a specific range. So this will allow us to say, hey, if you're above one, just set it back to one. So let's just add another proxy here, and I'm actually going to add a comment here. Just do base sine wave. We will add a clamp, and then inside of clamp, we can look at these again. We have min, max, the source variable, and the result variable, which means the source variable we have to get from our sine wave before we can do anything with it. To get the value of the sine wave into a variable that we can then put into clamp, we have to define another parameter. So if we just go to the additional parameters tab, let's just create dollar sign sine wave output, and we'll just give this a value of zero. The value doesn't matter, and the name is just for our reference. What we're going to end up doing is going back to proxies, and instead of result var for sine wave, we're going to put sine wave output. So now the values of that sine wave, so the values of zero to five, are being output to this variable here. Inside of clamp, we want to do min val of zero, max val of one. The source var one is going to be sine wave output, and then the result var will now be color. And we'll just leave a comment here. Clamp output to max of one, min of zero. And we'll save that. We're creating a sine wave. We're storing the output of the sine wave in sine wave output. We're then taking that sine wave into a clamp proxy. And that clamp proxy is not going to let those values leave zero or one. If we come back into here, reload all materials. We can see that we're bright. We're not breaching over the max color of the material. We're staying at one, which is the pink color. Stay there for a while, and then we go down. Open the other VMT here, and let's create a flickering effect. So I'll just drag that into VMT Editor. Once again, we'll go to the Proxies tab. We'll just type Proxies. And we're going to use a noise generator for this. So if we go to List of Materials, we'll just search Noise. We can do Uniform Noise or Gaussian Noise. I'm going to use Gaussian noise because I think it creates a better effect for the flashing light because we can bias them towards a value. So we want all of these. We want mean, half width, min, max, and result var. So inside of this, we type Gaussian noise. And then let's just add all of our variables first. So we want min val, max val, half width, mean, and then result var. So our minimum value is going to be 0.1, meaning I never want the light to completely go off. The maximum value is going to be one. So we're going to end up generating a, a noise signal between zero and one. And if we look at this, the half width, the distance from the average at which it's only 30% likely to occur. So what this is going to allow us to do is kind of force our outputs to be centered around a specific value. I'll just do a half width of 0.5 and we can do a mean of one. And then for the result far, we'll just do dollar sign color and we'll save and reload all materials. Now this is going to be very flickery because the material proxy, I believe, samples every frame. So we can see that that is unenjoyable to look at. And actually, I don't think it looks very good because it's constant noise. Let's go back to the proxy here. Let's change the mean to say 
0.1 and we can reload so we can actually see what that looks like. So we can see that that is a much harsher effect, right? We're getting a lot more dark in it because the mean has been brought down. And if we were to bring, say, that mean back up to maybe 0.5, we should be about right in the middle. Still a lot going on there, and I, I don't like it. I've played around with this before, and the values that I'm actually going to stick with are half width of 0.5 and a mean of 1. So I'm going to leave this as my final noise generator settings. So we'll come back in here. I'm not a huge fan of how this looks overall, but it's getting us to where we want to be. I kind of want to create a harsher, maybe distance between the max brightness and the min brightness. So when the sign were to flicker off, it hard flickers off or it's just on. So we should get a lot more darkness in it and a lot more times where it's just bright. We can use less or equal. So if we go to the list of proxies again, less or equal, it's going to compare the first value to the second and then a variable to copy if the condition is met. So what less or equal is going to allow us to do is it's going to take that noise signal and it's going to compare it to a value that we determine. And if it's below it, we output one value. And if it's above it, we output a different value. So let's just go back to our proxies here. Let's add a, another proxy. I will want to leave a comment for myself. And we'll just do a less or equal. And then inside of here, we want to add these, these variables here. So we'll do less or equal var, greater var. We'll do source var 1 and 2 and then result var. We need to take this base noise signal, and instead of putting it directly into color, we need to put it into a different parameter. So we'll go dollar sign and we'll do noise signal, and we'll just make this zero. Again, the value does not matter. Noise signal, we'll copy that, and instead of color, we'll put noise signal. Now the result var from less or equal is going to become color. The source var one is going to be our noise signal. And now source var2 has to be a variable. So if we had, say, another noise signal or a sine wave signal, we could put that here. However, I just want to say if the noise is generated under, say, 0.6, always make it low. So we can define essentially a static variable here of dollar sign, and we'll just call it noise gate, and we'll give this a value of 0 0.6. Back under proxies, the source value is going to be noise gate. The greater than var and less equal vars also need to be defined as additional parameters. You can't just type a number in here, say one and zero. They actually have to be defined in additional parameters, otherwise the game won't take them. So I'll just create a value here called one, give it a value one and another one of zero, give it a value of zero. So under proxies now, we'll just do less or equal var is going to be zero and greater than var is going to be one. So now if I save this, we have all of this stuff added over here. Now instead of getting this constant noise, we should end up with a light that is either fully on or basically off. So I think this already looks way better than what we had before because we're no longer getting any kind of half-lit values. We're just either it's off or it's on and it's based on that noise signal. And remember, we can go back and if we want to change the mean of this to say 0.2, that will immediately make the flicker way more biased towards being off than it is to being on. So we've kind of just inverted that logic a little bit. So we'll go back to this, make the mean one again, because we want to bias it towards on. Now that we have both of these effects going, we can combine them to create a light that will spend more time on and then spend a little bit of time flickering like it's only somewhat damaged and then come back to being on all the way. Let's start by just combining both of our sets of proxies here. So we're going to take the sine wave, which is going to be base sine wave. Let's copy that over here. And we also need the sine wave output. We can come into additional parameters. We can type dollar sign, sine wave output. Let's make that a zero. Now we need to add these values together. And we're going to do that by using the add proxy, which just takes a source var one, source var two, and then pops it out into the result var. So let's hit a new line, add. And then source var1, source var2, and then result var. Our first source var is going to be the sine wave output. Just copy and paste that here. The second 
value here. We actually want this signal from less or equal. So we'll go to additional parameters. We'll create another one here called LOE output, which is less or equal output. We want to take the result var from less than or equal, and we want to send it into our new variable. Then we want to take that variable and send it into add. And we need the add output. Let's just send that to color for right now. We'll save that. Then let's reload in game. So now we have that issue again where the sine wave is pushing us over the max color. So we just need to instead clamp the value that we're getting out of add. So we'll add vars together. So let's just recreate a clamp proxy. And we want minval, maxval, source var one, and then result var. So the minimum value that we want, let's do 0.1. The maximum value that we want is one. In our source var, we want this signal from add. So we'll create another one. We'll call this add output. So we'll change the result var of add to add output, the source var of clamp to add output. And now the result var here is going to be color. Now let's reload in game again. Now we're staying bright. And then we have a brief moment of flicker. If we wanted to adjust how often that flicker happens, we can take this sign period, we can adjust the min and max values. So let's say we wanted equal parts flicker and equal parts not flicker over the course of five seconds. We just set our min value to zero and then our max value to one. But if we want it to not flicker for longer, we just, again, we pop this, this max value up. This should get us only a small window of flicker. And this is all because we're clamping that value. So the sine wave stays high for so long that there's only a very brief window for the flicker to actually occur. We can make that flicker occur a bit more often by setting this to about six. We can take this entire block of proxies, put it into light broken two. And if we refresh all materials now, only the one is happening. OK, so the proxy unable to initialize. This is most likely because we don't have our other parameters here. So let's just copy all of this. Everything but the color. We'll put it right here. So now we have all of our additional parameters. All of our proxies are here. Uh, it looks like the empty editor stripped our comments. That's not a big deal. We don't need them anymore anyways. So let's refresh this again, and we shouldn't get those initialize errors. You'll now notice that they both start their flicker patterns at the same time because the sine waves are in sync with each other, though the flickers are unique between the two because they both have different noise signals powering the flicker. If we wanted to offset the flicker between the two, we could go into the sine wave and then just add a time offset of maybe 2.5. So now this sine wave should start 2.5 or halfway through the phase, 2.5 seconds through a five second phase. So now this one should flicker and then this one will have an option to flicker and then we'll go back to that one flickering. I feel like that's a little pre-planned out if they're next to each other. So I'll get rid of that. And what I like to do instead is just change the sign period and the max a little bit. So they will kind of be out of sync with each other on their flicker. So every eight seconds, this one's going to flicker. And every five seconds, this one will end up flickering. And then eventually, the phases will overlap. And they'll both end up flickering at the same time like that. That's going to do it for this brief introduction to proxies. With this information alone, you can go ahead and look at that list of proxies and the proxy page on the VDC, and you can start to do all sorts of crazy stuff. This is only scratching the surface. I hope this tutorial helped you. Thanks for watching. I guess don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you liked the video, or don't. I'm not your dad.